Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. Now this is part two of our video series on delitting the 8700K processor. So if you haven't seen part one already, do check that out first. That actually shows the process of doing the delitting itself, what's involved, how to do it, how it all goes back together again. Now in this video, we're going to be focusing on the actual results. So first of all, we're going to be traveling back in time before I did the delit, rolling a video that I did of some stress testing and showing the temperatures and voltages that were required to reach my 4.9 gigahertz overclock that I was able to achieve before delitting. Next, we're going to have a look at what we're actually able to achieve after the delitting, both in terms of with the same settings, what the temperatures became, and then what our maximum overclock was after that. So as I mentioned in the first video, my overclocking was very much thermal limited previously. That meaning that my um, temperatures were getting out of hand before my voltages were reaching the point where I would normally be comfortable with. So I was running previously a 4.8 gigahertz overclock with no AVX um, offset and um, 4.8 gigahertz locked on all six cores. And I, to achieve that clock speed, I was requiring 1.28 volts, which is pretty good. But what I was finding is as soon as I bumped the voltage up any higher than that to try and achieve a higher overclock, the temperatures were getting completely out of hand. The maximum that I could actually reach safely was a 4.9 gigahertz overclock at 1.34 volts V-core. And at that level, the, uh, the temperatures were getting right up at the maximum that I was comfortable with. They were hitting 85 degrees Celsius um, off a cold boot. And after a heavy gaming session, if I was to jump straight into a um, stress test, it would jump up and hit that 95 degree mark. And so the ambient temperature was 22 degrees Celsius, which we've kept consistent for all of our testing because I do have the privilege of living in an air conditioned house here. So we keep it at 22 degrees pretty much all the time. So we'll roll the video here now and show you the results we got. So the boot temperature was around sort of 45 degree mark. And as soon as we start that stress test, you can see the temperatures jump straight up to around the 80 degree mark on some of our cores with the average temperature sort of being around that 65 degree mark. So what was happening was if I tried to push any harder than this, we'd go straight up to the 95 degree mark and we'd start to see some thermal throttling. But you can see throughout the duration of this test and we'll fast forward a little bit here. We're getting temperatures around that 85 degree mark and that's at 1.34 volts up to 1.36 volts with the um, LLC that I'm running. So we ran a five minute test in total and our temperatures didn't go above that sort of 80 degree mark on the individual cores. Our, you can see our internal temperatures were rising slowly. We got up to 30 degrees on our motherboard. And as I mentioned before, after a heavy gaming session where our temperatures within the case get up to around the 40 degree mark, we do see temperatures hitting that 95 degree mark and some thermal throttling happening. Now what that meant was that basically I'm hitting the thermal limit of my CPU, meaning that I can't run any more voltage because if I do, the temperatures go even higher still and we start to get thermal throttling and you know we, we get instability as well and what I found was that sometimes it actually running more voltage made the CPU more unstable because the temperatures were coming up even more and we we're hitting those thermal limits. Okay so we'll jump into the system as it sits right now and you can see straight away my ambient temperature is exactly the same as it was previously 22 degrees 26 degrees on the motherboard but my CPU temperatures are about 15 degrees lower than they were previously. Clock speed is exactly the same as it was before, and you can see my CPU core temp my bleh, my CPU core voltage is exactly the same as it was before. So, as soon as we hit the stress test on, the core goes up to 1.36 volts because of the load line calibration. But you can see now my temperatures immediately are about 25 degrees less than they were previously. But that is not the full story here because we're not actually ramping up our uh, water pump as much as we were previously. Because the temperature was going so high last time, I was ramping my, um, my water pump right up to that sort of 100% duty cycle rate. Whereas at the moment, it's still only running at about 50% duty cycle, yet we're still getting temperatures that are so much lower. So what that tells me now is that I'm nowhere near the maximum thermal capacity of the CPU anymore at this voltage, which means we now have more voltage headroom in order to achieve higher clock speeds, hopefully. So we'll let this test run for the full duration again, five minutes, and um, we'll, we'll just sort of sit, let it run through, fast forward a little bit, and then we'll come back at the end and have a look at it, see what the temperatures did, and then do a quick summary for you. Okay. 
Okay, so we're just approaching the five minute mark now and you can see the temperatures haven't budged up above that maximum of 65 degrees on the hottest core and an average temperature of around 55 degrees across the package. So we'll stop the test and you'll see now that the temperatures should drop down. Yep, they're dropping right back down to around that sort of 30 degree mark again. Yep, there it goes. So much, much, much tighter spread on the CPU temperatures across the whole surface as well, which tells me that we're getting much better thermal conductivity for each individual core as well as the package overall. So as I mentioned before, because our um, temperatures are so much lower than they were before and we're not hitting anywhere near the maximum duty cycle of our water pump, that means we can now ramp the, ramp the voltages up a lot more than we did before and hopefully get some much better clock speeds and more stable results out of the system. So what we'll do now is we'll go back into the BIOS, we'll do some more overclocking and I'm not going to show you the overclocking process in this video because I do want to do another video later on that explains how all the overclocking stuff works, what all the settings mean and the settings that I use for my individual chip and this motherboard. So we'll cover all of that in another video but I'm going to get it overclocked now a little bit higher we'll come back in again and see what we're able to achieve with this deluded processor. Okay, so I've spent the last hour or so just fine tuning and really, really trying to squeeze the most I possibly can out of this processor. And I'm really happy to report that I've got some really good results. Now, it's still not a particularly good processor in that it still needs a lot of voltage to hit higher clock speeds, but I was able to hit that five gigahertz mark at the same voltage as I was previously able to hit 4.9 gigahertz at. So what that's telling me is that lowering the temperatures a little bit has actually made the processor more stable. So I'm now able to run 5 gigahertz instead of 4.9 at that 1.344 or 1.36 under LLC voltage. So that makes me really happy because I really wanted to hit that 5 gigahertz mark, but we actually got a little bit of a better result than that out of it in the end as well. I was actually able to push to the 5.1 gigahertz mark. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you another stress test. So we'll run it live in front of you now. And you can see now I'm running 1.408 volts on my vCore, which is starting to push the upper limit of what I'm happy to run as a daily. But you can see my temperatures over here are still very, very low under idle. And when we hit that stress test on, we're still only getting temperatures that are underneath that 80 degree mark. So you can see here up to 68 degrees straight away. I have seen temperatures go a little bit higher than that. So what we'll do is we'll run this test for five minutes again just to see what our maximum temperatures peak out at. But you can see under LLC our maximum voltage is 1.24 volts on the vCore, which is, yeah, pushing that upper limit of what I feel safe to run. But you can see my temperatures, even after what I've been running a minute now, still way, way, way lower than they were before. And remembering that my, um, my water pump is still not running anywhere near 100% duty cycle. And if I was to run 1.4 volts before, I would hit immediate thermal throttling on the CPU. So the temperatures effectively are about 30 to 35 degrees lower than they were before delitting. And that is incredible. It really shows the difference that delitting can make. And the, the, how bad the thermal interface material is that, um, that Intel used from factory. So still running through here, we're running a minute and a half now, hitting maximum temperatures of 77 degrees on an individual core with a package temperature of around, what are we looking at here? Package temperature of 69, 71 degrees, which is still well within the thermal tolerances that I'm happy to run. So what we've achieved here is we've moved our limitation with the CPU from a thermal limitation to a voltage limitation, meaning that I'm not really comfortable running any more than 1.424 volts through this CPU. I don't know how much harder it would go if I was to pump more voltage, but as a daily driver, I think that this is probably the maximum limit that I want to run at. And, you know, later on down the track, we might push a little bit harder and see if we can get up to maybe 5.2 gigahertz. But as I said in the first video, the difference between clock speeds really isn't significant when you when you start to push towards that upper limit and benchmarking this between now and previously there's not a whole lot of difference really it was about wanting to hit that five gigahertz mark and have temperatures that i was happy with so i probably won't actually run it at one at 5.1 gigahertz because I don't really want to run 1.424 volts all the time but at that 1.36 volt mark at five gigahertz i'm really really happy but looking at this still now we've been running what is it two minutes 48 now and our temperatures still aren't going above that 73 degree mark on those individual cores. No thermal throttling and yeah, that's that's a really, really impressive result. You know, there's a spike there of 79 degrees, but still looking at our package temperature, it's not going above that 70, 
70 degree mark there, which I'm really, really happy with. So the takeaways here are basically, if, you, if, you, if you're going to run a high-end water cooling system on your machine, it really isn't going to be taken advantage of unless you de-lid your processor. Um, de-lidding, I would say, is absolutely necessary if you want to get into the high end of overclocking. If you just wanted to push a little bit more than stock, probably not worth voiding your warranty over, but if, you, if you're going to spend a lot of money on cooling gear, it's really, honestly, I think it'd be silly not to de-lid your processor, because you can see here, you know, we've, we've moved our limitation from a thermal limitation to a voltage limitation, and we're still seeing temperatures of 20 degrees less, even running almost 0.15 of a volt more than we were previously, which I think is amazing. So look, I definitely think that de-leading is something that you should consider if you're going to be overclocking your CPU, and especially if you are looking at some high-end cooling. But we're just getting towards the end of the test now, four and a half minutes running now and still the temperatures aren't rising. We can see everything's leveled off there. Motherboard temperature's up to 34 degrees now, so it's starting to push higher than it did in the previous tests with the old overclock. But again, we're still not seeing temperatures over that 75 degree mark, 60 degrees on the package, 70 degrees on the package around that mark, and our spread across the different cores is a lot narrower than it was previously as well. So, look, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Definitely want to get more stuck into overclocking videos and show you exactly what settings I use, what all the various different settings mean and what they do for you as well. So stick around for that. Make sure you do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss the upcoming videos on that stuff. And of course, the notification button too. But look, thank you guys very much for watching. I'm super happy with this result. So I'm going to get stuck into some gaming now and see whether it makes any difference in the real world. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.